So to part three of the whole VE Pro Disabled template, why bother? Why indeed? Because it is very fiddly to set up, um, great in use, but do you really need to go through that? Let me talk you through how I arrived here, what was wrong with all the other ones. Uh, I've got another template video there, which I want you to now completely ignore, which was the traditional old school big template and how to arrange that and you know that, that it was you know it's good as far as it goes it's the, the the main problem with just having a massive template in that case i think it took about 40 gigs of ram is one it takes 40 gigs of ram and even there i was finding i was leaving stuff out because i was going to run up to my ceiling of 64 gigabytes and i didn't want to be so close that that i was getting into real operational trouble and so that's the first thing you have to then, you know, do you want to go down the road having whole slave computers to run all this stuff? So it's it's obviously very demanding. Uh, the second thing about that is that because it's so demanding and it takes a long time to load, it takes, OK, with SSDs and purged and all the rest of it, you can get it down to, you know, I think mine was about four minutes on a good day, um, which is not too bad, but still... I just found all the time I was only often tracks I'd use just a handful of instruments, just a tiny fraction of what I had loaded, ready to go. Um, and so I found myself not using it. And then I found myself doing what I've got here, actually. I've loaded up an old template where I would just do stripped down versions. This had, you know, a few basic strings in it. Uh, old Symphobia that's in just about everything I do. Uh, it had less in it. But then... You know, it wouldn't have Sable, and I'd go, "Ah, oh, that's okay." What I can, what I can do is just, 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 I can just have different ones. So I can have a different one for chamber ones, which is what Sable's good for, and a different one for big band, and so on and so forth. And then you start getting into lots of different templates, and if you want to change an element in there, you've got to change it for all of them. And I also found it was still quite restrictive. It was. It was just meant everything was starting to sound a bit samey because I'd just go for the easiest option that was there quickest, and maybe that's just me. I did try then to dovetail that into another idea, which was to have modular templates where you could add bits as you needed them. So in this case, uh, see, I've got things here. It says Sable. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. It's a lie. But it's supposedly ready for Sable. And what I'd do is I'd go import track archive i had a shortcut for that and here we have some things um sable let's see what happens and what in theory this is going to do is not use rack instruments like i use in my template now it's going to use um see how long this is taking it's going to use instrument tracks sable for some reason just does take a long time and instrument tracks can have multiple outputs and do everything that racks can do only you can save them in these nice big blocks. Really, is it doing anything? Um, let me just go over to... This is what happens with Sable in particular. When you're loading the whole thing, it just takes forever. Uh, I'm going to keep talking in the hope that at some point something will happen. And you would load in this block, so I need Sable, okay, and, and you can see it's not... Really... Oh, there we go, finally. How long did that take? Uh, so that's there's your problem one. I happen to pick quite a bad example. Okay, right, do it. Um, so right away, that's slightly annoying. That if I just think, oh, maybe I just need a bit of you know one thing from Sable. That's taking a long time. That all I've done so far is get to the point where it asked me what what I want to load, and I say all of it. You can't see it's off screen. VE Pro is now loading uh, the instrument, so something is happening. Good. Uh, Few. It's loading some more. Uh, the second thing right that is now there and whoa there we go so that's good we have something going now uh, it took a long time it's bunged it at the end of the project that's annoying uh, I can make these go smaller like I like and then I can drag them in now in that case that's not too terrible it's actually loaded in in quite a sanitary condition um, as I'm looking down here that all seems broadly okay. But what I'd found, I'd keep running into this Cubase bug that has vexed a number of us. And now, just out of interest, does it actually... Ooh, you know, something's there. Um, I'd run into this Cubase bug that it would start scrambling the outputs. And this, I, I looked here, in this multi-channel world, 
it starts going crazy. So I've got Omnisphere here, just default patch. Look what it's done to my outputs here. This isn't me. Uh, Omni A, B, C, D, E. Where's F? There's H. A's are there again. So it's coming out of two outputs now. And F and G have gone to the bottom. And I would find that it would just scramble stuff. And I'd load stuff in in these archives. And it would be scrambled all over the place. So in the end, this just seemed to be a world of pain and problems. And the whole modular thing, due to various problems of delays and loading and then scrambled stuff when you had it that really wasn't working out very well so another idea that does the rounds is having a disabled template in Cubase where you just have disabled instruments now on the sphere 2 I actually had disabled which is not very efficient because it turns out if you have a second instance of anything it doesn't use many resources but I was experimenting so there you go, that's disabled. It's, and you can do this for VE Pro as well. You, and then you can enable your track instrument. There we are, I've done that there. But you would, I would find the same problem here. It's actually done it okay again. Um, but I would find these were all getting scrambled. Also, if you're hosting everything, um, well, if, you, if you're doing, well, that, that, that was it for that really, that I was just finding these outputs were getting scrambled all over the place, stuff like this would happen it was just an horrible mess you'll also see the way i'm actually organizing this is a little bit untidy that you have to have your audio outputs i can't drag these anywhere they just won't so you've got your audio outputs under midi track one then you start with track two so i was finding myself not using track one it was just clumsy um and that's uh and that's when using ve pro so what some people do, I mean, uh, uh, Junkie XL, I know he's famous for having a massive disabled Cubase template where you just, I think you just say, forget this multi-output business. It's always a nightmare. You just have one disabled track for one thing. That will work. Um, the problem there, I found, is that it was getting massive projects that, okay, it's disabled, but stuff like um, Action Strikes, which I think I got rid of which i had ready to go and a native instruments thing that one instance of that was taking up a phenomenal amount of i don't know it was 30 megs or something which doesn't sound like much uh but if you multiply it by hundreds of tracks people were getting into two gigabyte disabled templates before you've done anything and then you save you auto save and that takes a long time and you do different versions and you have multiple version auto save versions different you would just i'd like to run everything in dropbox so that i can back everything up these massive files were great unwieldy beasts and then the final thing why i don't like that is that you um you end up uh just being very inefficient in the use of resources ve pro over here here we are disable in ve pro um, it's about twice as efficient as Cubase at running things. You get twice as much bang for your buck in VE Pro. So all round, just running a completely disabled instance, I just found really overwhelmingly clumsy. And uh, I, I, I mean, it works for Mr. Excel, and well done, Mr. Excel, and all that. Um, but for me and my computer and the way I work, it just wasn't happening. And so I, th I think the VE Pro disabled route is the best of all worlds. Pretty much just two downsides, and then a, a caveat. Downside one is that it takes ages to set it up in the first place, but once you've done it, it's great. So fine, I can live with that. Does that um, drawback to you have to spend a little bit of time loading instruments. But it's like there, when I loaded Sable, that, how long did that take? That took half my life just to load, load all of Sable. Um, and I've reorganized that so that you're just loading it instrument by instrument. And I'm finding in VE Pro that's much quicker. Uh, even loading a Sable instance of, of, say, first violins just takes a few seconds. Now, nothing like that cumbersome length of time it seemed to in track archives. Um, and so it doesn't take long to load each bit. That's fine. I can live with that. And the only thing just to say, let's get VE Pro back up a moment. The only other problem I found, where are we? Help about Vienna Assemble Pro. Uh, it's not showing you on the screen. It's showing you on another screen. It says it's version 6.017, something like that. I found in this version very occasionally it will black full-scale deflection at me when I'm enabling or disabling a track, um, which is terrifying. And 
scary and ear damage and speaker damage and all that. They fixed it. VSL told me they fixed it. The next version is not going to do that. It happens very rarely, I have to say. It's like one time in 50 or 100 or something, but you don't want it to happen at all. They said they found what's causing it, so well done, VSL. So that's the only thing in, in full disclosure at the moment. You just keep your monitoring down a bit when you're enabling and disabling for the time being, just in case. And so, yeah, I think at the moment, practically, given the bugs of Cubase and everything else... Oh, that's another thing, running this track archives thing, because I'm having to load VSL instances, uh, VE Pro instances, with uh, my Cubase tracks, I'm running them coupled, which increases save times. So, again, it's it just feels clumsy and cludgy and bleh. Whereas the VE Pro disable one... It's lightning fast at saving. It's lightning fast at loading. It's very fast in operation. So, honestly, I think for Cubase users, that's the best way to go. Um, and thank you to everyone who put me onto it. Uh, the history is that I started off trying to do a modular VSV Pro template, not using disabled tracks because I thought it just would be a, such a nightmare to set up. But in the end, someone convinced me, no, 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 you really want to go down this road and have a right. Um, that that is the dream. Okay, that's quite enough Jabber from me and the last video. I hope someone's found it useful out there and helps you get set up and it's not giving you a world of pain and it solves problems rather than creates more because that's always the thing with templates. Um, thanks very much for uh, listening and I'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.